I've made it to Ireland and this is actually my first time ever in Ireland so I am very excited to explore. We are here for one week and today we drove from Dublin all the way to the wild Atlantic Way which is the west side of Ireland. We're gonna head more to the northern side which hopefully you've never seen before and we're in this cool little guest house called Burvey and the lady who showed us around she owns the place she was actually born in this place. I'm gonna show you this. She was born in the room that Jordan's in. So let's go have a look. George, I gotta show you the place that the lady of the house was born. I am. Here. Of course her name's Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Such a, um, such a lovely British. name. Oh, not British. <laughs> not British. Irish. Not British. Irish. 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 Such a lovely Irish name. <laughs> oh, look at you enjoying life. Pepper fresh peppermint tea. From the garden. From the garden. We've got the fire. Ooh. The natural fire. Real fire. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> My name is Elizabeth and this is my husband John and you're very welcome to Burvey on Eckle Island. In the middle of a wet and windy November. <laughs> oh, right. oh, yeah. oh yeah! You have to come in the summer. Yeah. All right. <laughs> welcome to Ireland, more specifically the Wild Atlantic Way. So we checked out the Burvey guest house and we headed to... First stop on the itinerary is Sleevemore Deserted Village and there's about 80 homes here. The homes date back to the 19th century, but there is evidence of Why? human activity that date back to 4,000 years BC. This spot, although there wasn't actually much to see other than a pile of old rocks, was crazy because there's evidence of life from 6,000 years of living here. This is so lush because it was an old manure heap. <laughs> and manure was old school gold. <laughs> yeah, so right. if you had more manure, it means you had more land to fertilize and wow more crops and basically you could make more humans to feed more people to look after you so manure was modern day bitcoin wow i understand now i understand <laughs> you definitely get a spooky vibe from this place because there's a cemetery right there it's all this like gray and black stone and then these crows they just kind of fly through and go and it gives you that strong game of thrones vibe <laughs> I just go like this. I just go. Ah, ah, I almost filmed this. your death. Welcome to the first ever discovered water rise, water rise or water fly. Oh my word! Wow! <laughs> okay, so after that rising waterfall, we headed off to the coast and drove along Ackle Island, got some really good views, beautiful weather, and this is one of those drives that everyone should really experience. Hopefully you get some good weather and get to enjoy some classic Irish beauty. So this took us all the way to Strand Hill which is our next location here in our Ireland itinerary. All right, we made Strand Hill, Ireland, and it might look like I'm in a bathroom, just because I am. We are in the seaweed baths of this area, and you basically start in this steam room, and then jump in this, in the salty seaweed bath. 
Apparently it feels amazing and it like really rejuvenates your skin. So let's do it. So slimy. Look at this. <laughs> I never thought I'd be bathing with this amount of seaweed. Normally when you see seaweed in the ocean, you're like, ah, gross, don't touch me. It feels like aloe vera. Look at the color of the water. Gross. But it does feel good in here. I'm already very nice and slimy. The salt and the seaweed together are like this nice detox, apparently. It's this pure jelly. Well, there we go. Seaweed baths complete right on the shore of Strand Hill Beach. It was cool being in the baths and you could hear the sound of the waves crashing while you're in this hot salt seaweed water goo. Pretty cool. I do recommend it. It was pretty awesome. Very relaxing. Look who lives in Ireland. Yeah, he this is my home. Me. He surprised me as I was always shooting the waves and he just stuck up on me. Chase and I met at summer camp way back in Canada, fellow, fellow Canuck, and here he is living in Ireland. I love when the world comes together like this. So good. So we are doing the Ben Bulbin Forest Walk and it's right below that Table Mountain you just saw. And it's just a really nice flat loop walk with some really nice light and shrubs around. So after the Ben Bulbin Forest, we head off to the Glenef Horseshoe and then to the Cassie Bond Castle for some more spectacular views. to Starl and it's like a off the beaten trail 20 minute drive and then like our hike into these cliffs that our guide has told us that only 200 people have ever stood up on these cliffs which is pretty epic it's so windy oh my gosh it's nice oh so we're going up there well let's go so even though it was so windy I thought my drone could handle it maybe in sport mode However, I sent my drone up and it immediately started flying off into the ocean. After a long time, I managed to sneak it back and just in time before the battery died, saved the drone. I just basically lowered it right against the water and then flew it along the water and then up against the cliffs and then right along the land. And anytime I rose like 10 meters above the land, it would just blow back. So luckily we managed to save it, but I guess if you ever have your drone flying into the ocean, drop it down. Anyways. Let's go enjoy and let's go hike up there. Welcome to my favorite day of the Ireland experience. And we were with a company called Unique Ascents. And Ian basically ropes people together and takes them and climbs sea stacks. This was so adventurous, so crazy, and one of the best experiences of our week in Ireland. Oh, oh my gosh, the blades were spinning so fast. <laughs> it was gonna rip out of my hand. Straight down, straight. <laughs> that was by far the most windiest experience I've ever had in my life. Those gale force winds were going up to 100 kilometers an hour. I feel like I've got it. natural Botox, like. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, we face lifts. <laughs> Our face is like this from the wind. What a day, so much fun. A few more days here on island. Let's keep it going. So the next day we woke up to this beautiful, misty, foggy, moody morning and got in the car and drove to Sleeve League Donegal. We have arrived to the famous Sleeve League Cliffs of Donegal and it's another windy, wet day today. Take a look. In every country where I see a body of water, I have to go swimming. So even though this is crazy treacherous and it's probably like a pretty heavy riptide, I just gotta go for a dip. I can't believe you'd even consider doing this. Oh. How does it feel? It's nice. I wake you up. All right, wide awake now after that freezing cold dip in the ocean, and now we're heading off to our next location. And along the way, we saw uniquely painted sheep, and apparently the farmers do this to locate their herds. No oh way! <laughs> oh that is her my. grand time. They're only three weeks old. Wow! Are they gonna be sheep dogs? Oh yes, one hundred percent. So we just met Terry and Nell, the two sheep dogs, and we're just gonna we're just with a local farmer here, and he's gonna show us basically how they shepherd the sheep. So this is so cool. I'm excited for this. So here we have the Border Collie, Nell, putting on a clinic on how to shepherd these sheep and corral them into a little spot. It's amazing to see her in action. Uh, Francis is the owner and the experience is called Away to Me, if you want to check it out. Really, really cool. Border Collies are the smartest dogs ever. <laughs> and apparently. He's been working on those dogs for 32 years. When he started, he was 10, which is amazing. Anyways. Sort of the northern, not the northern tip of Ireland, but the northern tip of the region that we're in. Seals down there on the beach, which you saw from that clip on the drone. We came to Ireland, let's say in a shoulder season. Mid-November isn't exactly full of sunshine. <laughs> it's a bit rainy, a bit windy. However, there's always advantages to traveling in the shoulder season, and that is we never have seen any tourists. I mean, that's partly due to pandemic, but there are tourists in the summer a lot. And then secondly, which is the biggest thing, is I just experienced the strongest winds of my life. That's basically why I travel. I travel for experiences and extreme ones at that. I wanna do things that have never been done or that I've never done and kind of push my comfort zone and limits. So experiencing like 90 kilometer an hour plus gale force winds <laughs> that hold you up was actually a treat. But yeah, if you enjoyed the experience and you want to know more about the trip, just check out the description, see my itinerary, and don't forget to like, leave a comment, catch you in the next one. Find the Guinness, what better way to finish her off? Mm. Having his first beer, near near beer. Fool the world, and I'll never know. Big sip, big sip. <laughs> Absolutely hates it. I love it. <laughs> Yummy. <laughs>